Hi guys, this is Ross and I'm in the Unit 3 Ribeye UK Composites facility and further to our last video where we looked at how we construct um, the Ribeye Prime series and the Yacht Tender hulls and decks using infusion and foam core laminates. On this video we're going to take a closer look at how we make some of our small components that we manufacture right here in Dartmouth. Now our ethos is always about building the best ribs, the most feature rich ribs and um, beside me here we've got the moulding for our dynamic console and if you ever come down the to Dartmouth, I'll give you a tour of the facility and talk you through what split tooling is, which we use on all of our consoles, all of our helm stations. We've got a helm station for a super yacht tender being built here. Now, if we come round to the side of this console, this is the console that you're getting like a Prime 821 and a 941. And with the driving experience of the ribeye, it's all about ergonomics and things like that. So what you'll see is a lot of reverse angles on all of our tooling. So effectively, if we had a steering wheel here, I've got a foot plate there and the ability for my knees to go right underneath the dash here. Now, if we were making a more simple console, and it's worth looking at lots of boat design, we would use what's called a bucket moulding, which effectively, if that's the console mould, you'd make the console inside it, and effectively, when it's done, you can pop it out. And that's a simple way of making a strong console, but you're not gonna have any ergonomics, you're not gonna have any reverse angles at the bottom, which increases your deck floor plan and you won't have any sort of space for cup holders and things like that and we always want to design something that's really badass and something that works and feels fantastic so you'll see we've got ergonomics here we also have recessed dashes and things like that just making the ribeye experience next generation so when ryan who heads up the department in here builds this console for example or this helm seat he'll make the console inside it but we can't pop it out as i said what we need to do is actually unbolt this tooling and that all sounds fine but when you do that what you're left with is pretty much a big exaggerated harsh edge along all of the join here which needs a lot of finishing which takes us into the next room okay guys so we're now in another part of the uh, composite facility um, my colleague Jay heads up this department he's got an unbelievable finish which basically takes like a raw uh, molding which comes out of the mold and gets it to showroom standard so the mold that was on the floor behind the console um, is a is one of our super yacht helm station um, moldings, and um, this is one of the moldings. Uh, sorry, one of the helm stations that's come out of it. So we'll all be finished with upholstery here. This particular one can have a um, a, a motorised carbon T top that can go up and down. Really cool bit of kit. Um, but as you can see here, it's been wet gelled. So as this would have come out of the um, the split tooling, effectively, there would have been a really harsh edge all along here. And first and foremost, what Jay has done, he's, um, he's trimmed all of that off, this, this sharp edge, which would have been along here. He's then sanded it back, and he's then applied a gel coat, which is thicker at the top, and then the, the gel is actually thinned out as it gets to the, um, to the finished edge, which comes out of the mold like that. And that gives you the ability to basically um, prepare and slowly smooth this surface into, uh, into the gel coat, which is smooth here. So eventually you won't actually be able to see that there was any sort of damage and sort of uh, harsh edges there when it came out of the molding. And that's how you get a really advanced shape and the, and the finished ribeye product as we, as we talk about. Now the first thing Jay would do here is grab this guide coat here, which effectively is a, um, it's like a charcoal powder. So when this dries, this will all just be applied all over the surfaces. And what the powder does, it finds its way into all the sort of nooks and crannies here. And when Jay or a member of his team will start to sort of sand that back, you basically get finer and finer with the sandpaper and you move up to a 1200. When you, when you actually sand that back, eventually it will become flat because the, the, the guide coat, you won't be able to see it effectively. There's then a two part polish which is applied, which basically will it'll get rid of any sort of pinholes you get in the surface. And you will always have a few imperfections out of the actual mold surface from the tooling, but eventually if you put the right time in it and you've got the right eye for it, all of this will look absolutely perfect, like mirror finish and you know, having great guys and boat builders on the ground is what ribeye is all about. We build very feature rich parts, which are hard to make in all honesty, but again, if you come down, have the tour of the business and get on the water in one of our prime series, hopefully you'll agree with us that they're just reach a really feature rich and just awesome boats on the water. Right guys, so that's uh, a wrap for the split tooling video. Thank you for watching. We've got some badass boats to build at the moment. Here's an 811 we're building at the moment with a carbon T-top. Behind me here, this is a locker lid that's going on. The Lucas family's Prime 81 for Guernsey. It's gonna have 500 horsepower, so this boat's gonna be epic. We'll probably do a follow the build. But most importantly, guys, if you're thinking about coming down to the Ribeye Client Experience event, or at any time of the year, you just wanna come down for a tour and a sea trial, we'd love to take you through all of these build processes, starting from the design to the manufacture, and um, we'll get you on the water, guys. So
watching and we'll do some more of these videos soon.